two of the little cards that they was handing out tonight. Everybody got those? Okay. I'll take that as a yes. If you didn't get one, yeah, we're having a drawing. You didn't get any? I'll get you some, yeah. Uh, it's a couple of little cards I want to hand out, and I'll tell you what they're... I'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more here in a minute. Uh, I want us to uh, tonight be thinking about the, the urgency to share the gospel. The, the urgency that we have to share the gospel. And we're going to be looking at two different scripture references. The first one, I'll go ahead and give them both to you so you can find them. It's Second Peter 3.10. Is the first one that we'll look at. Second Peter three ten. And the second one is James four fourteen. These little cards are, <coughs> I've found an easy way to share the gospel with somebody. It's, it's very easy to walk up to somebody and say, hey, can I give you a card? You don't have to go real in depth, and uh, you can, don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that it's an easy way if we're timid or a little bit uncomfortable doing something like this. It's an easy way for us to get a little bit more used to sharing the gospel with somebody else. Now, it's, it's good to leave one in a, in a restroom or on a table or something, you know, where somebody can find it later. But uh, it's a little more personal when you get to hand it to somebody yourself and say, hey, I want to share a little something with you. And, and you never know the doors that this can open up uh, just by handing them a little card. Now, let me tell you, the, the Scripture references on the back is for them to look up. It has a paraphrase of the Scripture under each one for them to be able to look at, but then they can look up the, the Scripture in their Bible, or you can share that with them. But uh, the reason that I give everybody one of these is that I, I want to challenge everybody in here to personally hand that card to somebody this week. Now, the yellow ones, are they're a, they're a Hispanic version, but I want to I wanna challenge everybody to personally hand this card to somebody this week. Don't leave it laying somewhere. Like I said, that's good. It's good to leave tracks and good to leave cards and stuff laying somewhere where people can find them. But it's going to mean more to you, and you're going to get more out of it if you hand it to somebody this week. You don't have to give them your life story. You don't have to, I'm not, you don't have to listen to anything I say, but I'm just giving you a challenge. But uh, you never know the doors that this can open up just by handing somebody a card. As you look at it, it says uh, at the top of it, the gift of God is eternal life. And then when you flip it the other way, you look at it, and it says the wages of sin is death. You don't know how many people that could pique their interest a little bit. Just share a little bit of God's Word with them. Like I said, it's got Scripture references on the back that you can point them to, that you can go through with them, that you can talk to them about if they want to do that. Now, I'm not saying to be pushy, but... You can hand them a card and tell them that, that Jesus loves them. Sometimes that's all it takes. We don't know what they'll do with this card. They might take it home and they might throw it in the trash. They might take it home and they might look at that and they might study on that for a little while and God might start dealing with their heart and they might find a Bible somewhere and get it out and start reading that Bible and God might save that person right there. You might not ever know it while we're here. Uh, when we're in heaven one day and they come running up to you and say thank you, Thank you for handing me that card. Then you'll know it. And then that's when it's going to be worth it. When they say, thank you for handing me that card. Because we don't know the lives that we can change just by simply handing somebody a card. That might be all it takes. Uh, like I said, the, the scripture I want to share with you tonight is out of 2 Peter 3.10 is the first, the first one. It says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in thee which the heavens shall pass away with great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. 
the earth also and all the works that are therein shall be burned up. And like I said, I want to talk about the urgency of sharing God's word. Uh, talking about Jesus' return. We've got uh, Brian Wiles out at Rachel Baptist Church. His, God has impressed upon his heart to do a march for Israel. And this is something that, that we want the church to be involved in. And, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because talking about we want to be allies with Israel. We don't want to be pulling away from Israel. We want to support them. We want them to know it. Uh, we see the things happening in the world today. I'm not a, a theologian or a, know a lot about Bible prophecy. I'm not professing to do that. But, but I do know enough to know that we're getting close. Uh, you, you can see the things that are happening in the world today and, and you can see uh, Bible prophecies being fulfilled and you can see things happening and you know that, that we're getting close. And you can just look and see that sometimes you might wonder how, how much more can God take of this? How much more will He put up with? How, how, much, how much more is His patience being stretched so the urgency to share his word that we, we don't know, just like it says, we don't know when he's coming back. We know that he is, but we don't know when he is. So there's an urgency there for us to share the word with everybody that we can, to talk to everybody that we can and tell them about Jesus Christ. Because we know, they might not be aware of it yet, but we know where they're going to go if they don't know Jesus Christ before he comes back. We know ultimately what's going to happen to them. Now, we might have family members. We have friends that, that, uh, that maybe we have talked to that we're praying for. Uh, we need to be willing to reach outside of our families. We need to be willing to, to reach out to people that we don't know because their soul is just as important as anybody else's, just as important as ours because Jesus died on the cross for them just as much as he did for us. So we need to be willing to reach out to these people. We need to have an urgency about us and, and thinking about Jesus' return because now we will be fine. The, the people that are saved, us, if you're saved, you're going to be fine. And, and sometimes we can get complacent in that and kind of not really think about the consequences for other people. We, we're comfortable, we get comfortable, and, and we're okay just, just showing up. But are we going outside and are we going out of our comfort zone? Are we making an effort to, to do what God has commanded us to do and to follow what He's commanded us to do and to go and to teach and to baptize and to, to teach people about Jesus Christ. The second scripture in James 4.14 <clears throat> says, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. You know, We've got Jesus' return is one reason for our urgency to share his word, to reach a lost people. Well, just like the scripture says right here, we don't know what tomorrow holds. Uh, we, and, and I, myself, we make plans months and years in advance. Uh, we never know if we'll actually make those plans, get to those plans, but we make them way ahead of time. And the Bible tells us that we're, we're not promised anything. We're not promised tomorrow. Uh, Today might be our last day here on this earth. A perfect example of that. What happened to those children this morning? They were probably planning on getting up this morning and going to school. But that didn't happen this morning for them. It did for us. We got up this morning and we went on with our lives. So... Ask yourself, just like I ask myself, did I, have I done anything to make an impact or to, to lead anyone to Jesus today? Is there anybody that I've reached out to today? Did I make today worthwhile for God? Or, or did I make today worthwhile for myself? So the urgency to share God's word, we've got an urgency because we never know what tomorrow might hold. We never know if we have tomorrow. Now, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong, there, there's anything wrong with making plans for tomorrow. We have to prepare for, for the future. We have to prepare for retirement, for uh, kids going to college. We have to prepare for that kind of stuff, and there's nothing wrong with it. Um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with being prepared, but, but I'm just saying, are we thinking about today, and are we living for today? 
instead of living for tomorrow, living for the weekend, or we just skating through the week so we can get to the weekend. So there's an urgency that we have to share God's Word. Like I said, it, uh, the Bible says that, that, that our life is like a vapor. J. Vernon McGee, in one of his Bible commentaries, says, and I quote, Life is like a mist on a mountainside, uncertain, transit, and temporary. So our life is temporary. It's, it's uncertain. We never know. Again, we never know what tomorrow is going to hold. So are we using it, are we using our life right now, living for God the best that we can? The urgency to share the gospel is a reality of life's unpredictability. God's word is clear. Anyone who doesn't turn from sin, turn to God through repentance and faith, has no chance of being in his presence at that appointed time. So again, are we sharing God's word? Are we taking the time? Uh, we had our devotions this morning, one that Danny had was talking about uh, spending time in God's Word and how uh, sometimes we feel like we get too busy, but what we don't really realize is that we're never too busy for God's Word and how much better our day can turn out just because we spent that time in God's Word because He's the one that, that takes care of us. Uh, he's the one that, that strengthens us. He's the one that gives us what we need. Uh, but because we, we do not know each person's lifespan or the, expect, or the exact day of Jesus' second coming, complacency can, has no room in the Great Commission. What Jesus told us, what the commandment that Jesus said was to go. Uh, again, like I said earlier, to go and to teach and to preach and to baptize and to share God's Word is, is what we're all called to do. It's not a, that's not a calling on one person's life. It's not a calling on just a few people out of the church. That's, that is the church's command that Jesus gives. We are all to go and to do and to reach people. <clears throat> I want to share six points to help to guide us as ambassadors for God's Word, as ambassadors for the good news. Uh, Smith's Bible Dictionary defines ambassador as a person of high rank employed by a government to represent it and to transact its business at the seat of government or some other power. So employed by the government to represent it. We're employed, we're God's ambassadors to share his good news. We're employed by God to represent him. Now how we live our lives and how we act, the things that we do is, is a, well, how we represent God. When we claim to be a Christian, we've talked, and you know this, we've talked about this before. People watch us when we claim to be a Christian. It's all eyes on us. If you have a workplace and you're the minority, then people are watching you when you're trying to talk to them about God and you're trying to, trying to help them to realize their sin and, and what they need in Jesus Christ. People watch because they're wanting to point out you're in your your mess ups they're wanting to point out everything that you do wrong so they can say hey I'm just as good as you are uh, I'm living a better life than you I'm doing more for so and so or I'm giving more to this charity or that charity so what good what good is it going to do for me to find Jesus if I'm living a better life than you so how we live our lives is a direct is, is exactly how people see us in, in our relationship with God well the first the first thing that I want to point out uh, is that we must have the right passion if we're truly concerned for the lost, if we're not truly concerned for the lost, we'll never be effective in, in our mission, in our command for God. If we have no concern for the lost people, if we are complacent and we are happy with things just the way they are, then we'll never be successful for God in His ministry. We'll, if we're happy, just like things, if we're happy the way things are and not reaching out to people and telling people about Jesus Christ, then, then we're going to be, it's just, we will never grow. Now this church is growing. Don't get me wrong, but but what I'm saying, we see other churches out there that they're they're happy staying just the way things are. They don't want to see growth. They're happy because uh, they're comfortable in their bubble, and they don't want to go outside of that. They want to stay right where they're at, and they don't want to see that growth. They don't want to step out and, and reach people. And then uh, Paul has set an example. He went from town to town preaching salvation in Jesus Christ. He loved his fellow Jews and even the Gentiles. Uh, Paul even said, uh, he was so dedicated to his mission that he even wrote in 1 Corinthians 9.16, Woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. 
So Paul's passion, he had a passion for the lost to come to know God. He had a passion to be able to reach out to people and share Jesus Christ with them. He, he wanted to see his fellow Jews and the Gentiles come to Christ. And then the second thing is that we must have the right priority. Acts 15.36 says, And some days after Paul and Barnabas... Wait a minute. And some days after, Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of, Lord, a word of the Lord and see how they do. Paul desired to go back to the places where they had planted churches. He wanted to go back and make sure that they were doing okay. He wanted to make sure that they were being nurtured from God's word, that they were growing up. He wanted to make sure that these people were learning and that they were being built up. Paul had a passion to see the believers being built up and to mature in God's word. And then the third thing is the right personnel. God doesn't necessarily call the equipped, but he equips those whom he has called. One can never be prepared enough for the ministry apart from the grace of God. There's no way that we can ever do anything without God to be successful for him. We have to rely on him and lean on him. And then the three characteristics that we should possess is obedience to God's command. His great command to tell us to go. Uh, the second is sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. We have to be able to, to know when the Holy Spirit's dealing with us, to move and to talk to someone. We have to be willing to obey that. We have to be dependent on God and not ourselves. Because when we get to a point to where we think that we're the ones causing the conversion, then that's when we have a problem. Because if we've caused the conversion, it's not a true conversion. It hasn't been a conversion. That person hasn't really been saved. If, we've, if we're the ones that's caused that conversion... Uh, but the examples of uh, God using the people that he's called and equipping them, how about the apostles? You've got a, a variety of different backgrounds. These were, they were unprepared. They, were, uh, you know, they came from different backgrounds, fishermen, uh, tax collectors. But God took, them, took those men because they were obedient and they were willing to listen to him. He took those men and he molded them and he made them into the messengers that he needed them to be. And they carried God's word and they shared it and they were effective in their ministry because they were obedient and they were sensitive to his calling and they listened to him. And then the right precaution. We're witnessing to people with different cultures and backgrounds. Sometimes we have to be careful how we present God's message, how we present the word. Now, uh, I'm not saying change the message because the message never changes. The message is always the same. We don't change the message. But uh, sometimes we have to be a little bit more sensitive when we come across people not knowing their culture or their background. If you look at Acts 14, when Paul and Barnabas went into Listeria, I don't know, that's probably not how you say that. When, when they went in, in Acts 14, they went in and healed a lame man. Uh, they were doing that to show the power of the Holy Spirit. But they had done that in front of the Jews before, but this time their audience was mainly Gentiles. The Gentiles in that area, they believed in Greek mythology. So when Paul and Barnabas came in, they, uh, they healed and preached, and, and the, most of the crowd took this the wrong way. They thought that they were Greek gods come down to visit them. So I'm just using that as an example is how we have to be careful when we present it to other people sometimes, not knowing what they believe necessarily or maybe their backgrounds. Now, we present God's Word and give them the truth of God's Word, and God's Word can change their heart. It doesn't matter where they're from or anything about them because God, God's Word is what, and the Holy Spirit is what, does the, what causes the conversion and what causes the change. But all I'm saying is that when we share the gospel, we have to be sensitive to, the, to different people's needs and backgrounds. So we know the best way to present the gospel to them. And then the next thing I want to look at is we need, we need the right presentation. Uh, salvation, like I said, the message never changes. Salvation is through, by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. The message never changes. It always stays the same. We don't have to add any kind of health, wealth, prosperity, or any kind of teachings to entice people to come in. We just got to share God's word with them. Again, that message never changes. We preach and teach Jesus Christ plus nothing. We have to have, there's nothing else that can get us to heaven. We have to share that with people. Uh, when we were in Haiti, a lot of those people, they, they, would take, they would take God's word and they tried to put voodoo with it. So they tried to get Jesus plus voodoo. They tried to take their own religion and kind of infiltrate it into God's word and make, it, make those two come together and connect somehow. But that's what I'm talking about. We have to let people know that, that it's Jesus plus nothing. 
There's nothing else that we have to have to be saved. God offered His Son, and that's all we need. We just have to accept it. We also do not need to uh, put our faith in any method or strategy except the power of God's Word to convict people of sin and the Holy Spirit to do the drawing. So we've got to just keep that in mind. Uh, the last thing I want to look at is they were in the right place. Paul and Paul was in the right place. It says in Acts 16, 7, after they were come to Miss, Messiah, Messiah, they essayed to go to Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. The Spirit didn't allow them to go on. And Paul, like I said, being uh, we have to be obedient to the Spirit. Paul being obedient to the Spirit, he didn't go. He stayed where God wanted him. Paul was... Be this showed us that Paul's director in, on his missionary journeys was the Holy Spirit. He followed God. He followed the Holy Spirit. He was sensitive to the Spirit and knew what he wanted him to do. God was leading him to places where he wanted him to be, and he was sensitive enough to realize it. God opens doors and closes windows. He prevents and he allows. We have to be, again, discerning enough to know and to stay in step with the Spirit. So we have to be, and, and how do we do that? We've got to be in that relationship, you know. We've got to keep a relationship with Jesus Christ. We've got to do that in fellowship with Him. We've got to talk to Him. We've got to be in His Word. We've got to be on our knees in prayer. We've got to be building that fellowship, that relationship every day. Uh, when we become Christians, we get that relationship, but then we have to build that fellowship, just like we do with one another. We have to build a fellowship. We have to talk to each other. We have to uh, let each other know that we're there. We have to be in communication with each other. And that's how we build that fellowship. But wrapping it up, uh, ultimately, we have to rely on God who transforms people by His power and His Holy Spirit. And we have to rely on God and not ourselves. Like I said before, if we cause a conversion, it's not a true conversion. We have to realize, you know, like I've told you before, I had, it, it was hard for me to walk up to somebody and just say, hey, can I talk to you a minute about Jesus? Can, can I tell you about what Jesus has done for me? Or can I share with you a little bit about what Jesus can do for you? And uh, the more you do that, the more you start to realize that it, it, it just kind of gets easy. And God opens doors. Like I said, he, can open, he closes windows and opens doors. He allows things to happen. He puts us in the place and the time where we need to be at the right time in the right place. Uh, I went to visit somebody at the hospital uh, Tuesday, I think it was, and I went to her room where she was, and I knocked on the door, and somebody said, come in, and I opened the door, and it wasn't her laying in the bed. It was a younger guy laying there in the bed. Uh, and I said, I'm sorry, I uh, was coming to visit a church member, thought she was in here, and uh, she must have been moved. He said, that's okay, and I started to walk out, and I said, can I have prayer with you before I go? Can I talk to you before I go? And he said, yeah, that'd be fine. Come on in. So God puts us where he wants us at those particular times. Now, if we're willing to, to carry through and to be obedient to God and to step up and say, okay, God, what do you want me to do? So I got to go in and have prayer with this guy. Never met him before. Don't know, didn't know him from Adam. But uh, got the opportunity to go in and have prayer with him. And before I left, I said, can I ask you one more question before I go? He said, yeah, go ahead. I said, do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? He said, yes, I do. I said, that's good enough for me. I said, I'll see you on the other side if I don't ever see you again. And just those opportunities are out there if we're willing to take them, if we're willing to follow God. And again, that's why I wanted to give everybody one of these cards. It's an easy way just to say, hey, I just want to share a little something with you. If you don't like these cards, you don't have to use them. But I just wanted to give you a little challenge this week. It's, it's homework. It's, it's homework for Hank, for everybody. <laughs> you didn't get a yellow one? I'll get you one. But just take the opportunity. Like I said, take the opportunity to personally hand it to somebody and just say, I just want to share something with you. All you have to do is read it to them. You can show them. A lot of people look at it and they're like, what is that? And they're turning it every which way trying to figure it out. So if you just hold it up and show it to them and say, the wages of sin is death, and then you flip it over, the gift of God is eternal life. There's the good news. That's what we're called to do, share God's good news. I appreciate y'all. Uh, if you want any more of these cards, I got some more, and I'm going to order some more. So just let me know. If you didn't get some, if you didn't get a card, come up and let me give you one before you go.
I got some extra ones up here if you want to take a couple extra with you. We'll have a closing prayer. I'm getting you out early. You're welcome. <laughs> no, uh, I appreciate y'all. I love you. Thank you for... It's not Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that on the back of it. There's a... This uh, order, there's one that where you can order some of them, and then the one above it it says for spiritual help. Yeah, this <laughs> these cards come from uh, it's the Florida. They come out of Florida from the Florida, I think it's their Baptist convention down there. That's where they come from. <laughs> uh, any more questions? We got time to kill. Y'all want to ask some questions? I'll find somebody to answer them for you. No, thank you for coming. I appreciate you. I love you. If you need me for anything, come find me. I'll be here somewhere. <laughs>